Hello there, I'm back and today we talk about the muscles of mastication. So the muscles of mastic mastication are the masseter muscle, the temporalis muscle, and then the pterygoids, the medial pterygoid and lateral pterygoid. So these muscles of mastication, what do they do? They help us to masticate. So let us start one by one with the origin and insertions of these muscles of mastication. So muscles of mastication, the first muscle we talk about is the masseter muscle. So let me articulate the skull with the mandible here. This is how we do it. So this masseter muscle has got superficial, intermediate and deep fibers. So superficial fibers, they arise from the lower border of anterior two-third of zygomatic arch, while the intermediate fibers, they arise from the lower border of posterior one-third of zygomatic arch, while the deep fibers, they arise from the inner aspect of zygomatic arch. That is why they are called deep fibers. So these fibers go down and they get inserted onto the lateral aspect of the ramus of the mandible, except the posterior superior quadrant where the parotid gland is related. So the superficial fibers arise from the lower border of anterior two-third of zygomatic arch, and they get inserted into the lower part of the lateral aspect of the ramus of mandible. The intermediate fibers arise from the posterior one third of lower border of zygomatic arch and they get inserted into the central part of the lateral aspect of ramus of mandible. While the deep fibers, they arise from the deep aspect of zygomatic arch and they get inserted onto the uh, upper part of the lateral aspect of uh, ramus, except the posterior superior quadrant, so round about here, and some extensions are also given to the coronoid process. So this masseter muscle is a very strong muscle. This masseter muscle, you know, uh, we can feel when we open the mouth and close it. So when we clench the teeth, it can be palpated here on the sides, the masseter muscle. So, this was about the masseter muscle. Then the next muscle we come across is the temporalis muscle. So this muscle arises from the temporal fossa and temporal fascia. Its tendon passes deep to zygomatic arch and then the insertion is onto the anterior border of the ramus of mandible, the coronoid process, and then the medial aspect of the anterior border and the coronoid process. So this... Uh, Temporalis muscle is such that it is passing deep to the zygomatic arch. This means that the temporalis muscle is lying deeper to the masseter muscle because the masseter muscle was arising from the lower border of the zygomatic arch. And this tendon of temporalis muscle is passing deep to the zygomatic arch. So this means the temporalis muscle is in a deeper plane vis-a-vis -vis the masseter muscle. So compared to the masseter muscle, the tempo, temporalis muscle is in a deeper plane and this muscle is getting inserted onto the anterior border of the coronoid process, ramus of mandible and the medial aspect here. So this muscle, one more feature you can appreciate here when we do the origin and insertion that this muscle is passing from this side, it's going down. Okay. So when it will contract, what will happen? It causes, it pushes the mandible backwards. So it causes the retraction of mandible because the direction of fibers is such that when it will shorten, it will retract the mandible. It will push the mandible backwards. Then the next muscle which we do is the lateral pterygoid muscle. This is the key muscle of this region and mostly the structures in the infratemporal fossa are described in terms of the lateral pterygoid muscle. This muscle is a depressor of the mandible. So God has given us four muscles of mastication. All other muscles, they elevate the mandible and close the mouth while the lateral pterygoid depresses the mandible to open the mouth. So uh, speech is silver and silence is golden. Only one muscle we have to open the mouth while three muscles of mastication, they elevate the mandible and close the mouth. So let us do the lateral pterygoid muscle. This lateral pterygoid muscle has got two heads. Upper head is small and lower head is larger. So you can remember L for lower, L for larger. So this uh, lateral pterygoid muscle, the lower head, it arises from the infratemporal surface of greater wing of sphenoid bone. This is the infratemporal surface of greater wing of sphenoid bone. And there's a crest here. So crest of sphenoid bone and the infratemporal surface of 
greater wing of sphenoid bone. So this gives origin to the upper head of lateral pterygoid muscle. So this lateral surface of lateral pterygoid plate is from where the lower head of lateral pterygoid muscle, the larger head of lateral pterygoid muscle is arising. And then this muscle goes down and gets inserted onto the anterior aspect of the neck of mandible. So where is the insertion? The insertion is here in the pterygoid fovea on the anterior aspect of the neck of mandible. Now the thing about this uh, lateral pterygoid muscle is it's very interesting that its origin is uh, medial, it's medial to the insertion, you know, because the origin is from lateral aspect of the lateral pterygoid plate, while this is the pterygoid fovea. So you can make out the origin is medial to the insertion. Origin is anterior to the insertion and origin is also lower compared to the insertion. So because of this, you know, the lateral pterygoid muscle is able to depress the mandible. So this is the muscle which is responsible for depression of the mandible and opening the mouth. So lateral pterygoid muscle is the key muscle of this region. The masseter muscle, the uh, temporalis muscle, they lie superficial to it. Maxillary artery lies superficial to it, while the mandibular nerve lies deep to this muscle, lateral pterygoid muscle. Another muscle which is here is the medial pterygoid muscle. You know, these pterygoid muscles, they help in protrusion of mandible. They help in protrusion of mandible along with the superficial fibers of the masseter muscle. The intermediate deep fibers of masseter muscle and the temporalis muscle, they are responsible for retraction of mandible. So let us do the medial pterygoid. So medial pterygoid, it arises from the so when if this is the lateral aspect of the lateral pterygoid plate, so this inner aspect of the lateral pterygoid plate, this gives rise to the uh, deep head of the medial pterygoid muscle. Superficial head of medial pterygoid muscle arises from this maxillary tuberosity where my thumb is. And from where does the lower head of lateral pterygoid arise? Lower head of lateral pterygoid arises from the lateral aspect of lateral pterygoid plate. So if the lower part of this stick is representing the lateral pterygoid plate, then you can make out now that how the lower part of the stick is embraced or it is covered by the superficial and deep heads of medial pterygoid muscle. The deep head of medial pterygoid muscle, which is arising from the medial aspect of lateral pterygoid plate, and shown by my index finger is larger. So deep head of medial pterygoid is larger. Superficial head represented by my thumb is arising from the tuberosity of maxilla. And in between the superficial and deep heads is lying the larger lower head of lateral pterygoid muscle. So one can appreciate here how the larger lateral aspect of lower head of lateral pterygoid muscle, how the larger lower head of lateral pterygoid muscle is covered by the two heads of the medial pterygoid muscles. So this medial pterygoid muscle, where it is getting inserted, it is getting inserted onto the medial aspect of the ramus of mandible. So where is it getting inserted? There is a mylohyde groove here. So, below the mylohyde groove, there are rough rings here in relation to the angle of the mandible. In this roughened area, below the mylohyde groove, here is the insertion of the medial pterygoid muscle, which lies medial to the lateral pterygoid muscle. So, we have done the muscles of mastication today. I hope you have been able to understand them. Do give me a feedback. It was a short class, but it's a very important class for MBBS and dental students. So muscles of mastication, you must know in detail. So this is Dr. Gaurav Agniyotri signing off till I meet you the next time. Thank you and bye-bye.